before my girlfriend Sarah and I officially started dating, we would still hang out all the time. We both enjoyed hiking, and her family had a little cabin-type house in Colorado, not far from Aspen Mountain Resort. This was around our maybe 15th time hanging out. She invited me to go up there for a weekend with her to go hiking for the first time together. It was like a six-hour drive. As we neared her little house, we spent about an hour on this very winding, secluded road, on which we'd pass occasional driveways that would lead up into properties blocked off by walls of trees. We were way up there in the mountains, and the sight of other cars by this point was something to behold. It really felt like we were alone up there. A lot of the driveways didn't even have tire marks in the snow, meaning even a lot of the houses were devoid of people. Sarah told me that's because a lot of the houses here were owned by people out of state, just like her situation. I was going like 40 when she yelled at me to slow down. It was coming up, so I hit the brakes, and this little opening in the trees that I otherwise would have missed came up. We drove this narrow trail in four-wheel drive, which led to the small house covered in snow. It looked incredibly cozy. We parked, and the first thing we did was turn the heat on in the little house. We unloaded our stuff inside, and since it was already getting dark that night, we just cooked some of the food we packed for dinner and watched a movie. The Shawshank Redemption, actually. So the house had just about everything. Heat, electricity, except running water. Her family had jugs and jugs of water for important things, like washing hands and plates and stuff but there was no working toilet. She told me we had to use the outhouse outside. I only had to go pee that night, so I just went out to the front deck and peed into the snow. It was also snowing out that night. We fell asleep at some point during the second movie we watched and woke up pretty early to our phone alarms. We wanted to hit the trails in the morning. We started getting ready to go hiking after breakfast. I had to go out to the outhouse though. I ran out in my shoes and my feet started to freeze. On my way to the outhouse, though, I saw footprints in the snow. They were kind of big, but I couldn't tell if they were boot marks or animal prints. I followed the trail, and it actually wrapped around the house and then went into the woods. I called Sarah outside, and she came to look and said it was probably a mountain lion since they're often seen in this area. So I went and did my business, and we set off to hike the beautiful mountain trails. Afterward, we stopped at a local cafe to eat and then went back to the house. By this point, it was pitch black outside, and it was snowing again. We set up a fire, and got the heat on full blast, and started blasting some music. We started to drink, and eventually, I had to break the seal and pee. But also, if I was putting my boots on anyway, I figured I'd do all my business in the outhouse. I ran out into the snowstorm, into the outhouse once more. This time, I slammed the door shut to prevent snow and cold air from blowing in my face. I heard the blasting music from inside the house, but then, over that, I heard the crunching sound of footsteps in the snow passing the outhouse. Sarah! I yelled, but no answer. The footsteps just walked away. I brought my phone with me, so I just texted her, Are you outside? It didn't immediately deliver because my cell reception sucked up there. A few minutes passed and I was still in the outhouse. I was just about to finish when the blasting music suddenly stopped. It was just pure silence, minus the sound of snowflakes hitting the ground outside. As soon as I stepped out of the outhouse, I realized it was pitch black out there now. The lights from the house were off. I figured maybe the power went out. I used my phone's flashlight and noticed a fresh pair of footsteps in the snow leading to the house. I followed the footsteps to the front door. They seemed to stop, then continue around the house. I banged on the door and yelled Sarah's name. Suddenly the door opened, and an arm pulled me inside the house. It was Sarah. She slammed the door shut and locked it. She whispered that there was a man who tried to open the door, which she locked as soon as I went to the outhouse because she was scared being alone. When she saw the person at the door wasn't me, she cut the power and hid in the corner in the living room and watched in horror as a stranger walked past the living room window, slowly looking inside. I came to the door only a couple of minutes after this happened. Sarah told me about the secret cellar in the floor that her dad kept a couple of rifles and a shotgun in. Navigating in the dark, I found the handle to it, lifted it open, and using my flashlight, I climbed down the little ladder and grabbed one of the guns off the wall. 
We then waited on the couch in the dark, afraid to turn the lights back on, exposing ourselves to whoever was out there. The closest neighbors were not a short walk. Sarah said it wouldn't have been any of them, and odds are they weren't even in Colorado right now. Once again the only sound was the sound of snowflakes hitting the ground outside until the sickening sound of footsteps in the snow returned. I took the loaded gun and marched to the front door, opened it, and shot like three rounds into the air, screaming. The footstep sounds were gone. I'd imagine they ran off, and the sound of the shots echoing into the air masked the sound of the footsteps running away. We left the next morning under the recommendation of her father, who said it's best to not be there at the moment. They didn't really have anything they were worried about being stolen, so we just got the hell out of there. The next day, at least we got our full day of hiking in. That horrific night was definitely an experience, to say the least. Don't miss out on the bone-chilling thrills. Subscribe now and prepare to be haunted by the horrors that await. Though there was news of an incoming snowstorm all of a sudden one day that week, I wasn't going to cut my trip three days short, and I had already paid for it. I think it was a Saturday. I don't remember. But I woke up that morning to knocks at the front door of my cabin. I looked out the window in my bedroom, greeted with nothing but white sheets of snow covering everything, with heavy snow still piling on. I looked to the front door, and there was this woman in a parka who looked rather distressed. I quickly threw on a change of clothes and opened the door. She was some thirty-something-year-old woman. Her cheeks were red and she looked freezing. She asked in a polite way if she could seek shelter here until the storm blew over. I figured it was the kind thing to do, so I invited her in and told her to make herself comfortable while I heated up some hot cocoa. She settled down on the couch and asked if I lived here. I told her it was just a rental cabin, then asked where she was coming from. She said she also rented a cabin nearby, but got caught in the snowstorm and couldn't find her way back. She said her name was Sarah. I handed her a cup of hot cocoa, but she refused it and said she was really tired. Then she asked if she could just rest on the couch. I allowed it, though as I ate my breakfast I can't lie, I felt really awkward. I didn't really know what to do. After my breakfast, I didn't feel comfortable just hanging in the living room slash kitchen area, so I went back to my room to watch TV. The snow was really coming down outside, and the wind was so aggressive that the whistling streaked through the windows. Not too long after, another knock at the door. I once again looked out the window. This time there was a man outside. I went to open the door, with Sarah now sitting up on the couch, asking who it was. I told her I didn't know, then I opened the door. It was like deja vu because the man basically gave the same story, that he was caught in the snowstorm and needed a place to stay. At this point, having already let Sarah in, I had to let him in too. I told him the same thing I told her. Make yourself comfortable. He introduced himself as Daniel. Sarah and Daniel introduced themselves to each other as well, and they had a laugh at the fact that they were both in the same predicament. Then they both kind of playfully praised me for letting them in. Sarah seemed more lively now, opening a conversation. So, we talked about a bunch of random stuff until there was nothing really left to talk about. The day dragged on into the night. It grew dark and cold inside the cabin, and the snow showed no signs of receding. I offered them whatever food was in the fridge throughout the day. Unfortunately for me, it seemed it was approaching that time that I had to designate where they would be sleeping. But Sarah kind of did that for me. She asked if I would allow the two of them to stay here for the night. I had to say yes. So they both slept on the couches, and I slept in my room, of course. I fell asleep rather easily, with the knowledge that my belongings were under my bed and couldn't be easily stolen by these two strangers. I'm usually a heavy sleeper, but this night I woke up to a loud thump. I sat up. The door to my bedroom was open, and the sound of the outside wind was incredibly loud. I discovered the front door to the cabin was open too, and neither Sarah nor Daniel were on the couch. I went out to the porch for a second just to look into the woods. There were fresh-looking footsteps leading into the snow, and I could see Sarah just standing out there in the snow, facing me, holding what looked to be my backpack. I yelled at her to come back here, along with a few choice words. I ran to my room to get my boots. As I rushed to put the boots on, while on the couch, 
I noticed my bedroom door was now shut. I 100% did not close that door. Was I about to open it? Hell no. Especially not after I heard footsteps on the other side of the door. I got my boots and coat on and ran to the front porch again. But now Sarah wasn't alone. Someone, a man, I couldn't tell if it was Daniel or not, was standing next to her, holding her hand, and they were both facing the house. I didn't care about the backpack anymore. I ran to my jeep and drove through the three feet of snow. There had to be more than just those two people in the house that night because someone else was in the bedroom. I was too nice. I let my guard down with two strangers and I paid the price. I'm just happy they didn't harm me, though somehow I got the vibe they were trying to do more than just steal my backpack. My older brother and I had always been fascinated by the call of the open road. We lived in a quaint little town nestled near the outskirts of a dense forest, but the lure of adventure beckoned us beyond the familiar. One night, as the howling winds announced an impending blizzard, our parents granted us the rare freedom to embrace the elements and the wilderness. We thought playing hide-and-seek amidst the swirling snowflakes would be an exhilarating twist to our usual games. I decided to be the first one to hide, eager to find the perfect spot. Armed with flashlights, we ventured into the woods. Once I discovered my hiding spot, I extinguished my light to shroud my whereabouts in mystery. I nestled within the snow between two towering trees attempting to cover my tracks but knowing I couldn't erase them all. From the shadows, I spotted my brother's flashlight approaching. He was on the hunt. Realizing he was closing in, I fled deeper into the woods, enveloped in darkness. I was familiar with these woods, confident that I wouldn't lose my way. But as I ventured forth, I stumbled upon another set of footprints. Fresh and recent, they puzzled me. Intrigued, I began to follow them, anticipating they might lead to a deer or some other wildlife. The footprints became more defined, revealing a human touch rather than an animal's. As I cautiously pressed on, I approached a large mound of snow adjacent to the boot prints. Curiosity overpowered caution, and I started to uncover the dark object within. It was a black garbage bag, emitting a putrid odor. Hoping for a mundane discovery, I tore the bag open, only to recoil in horror at the sight of a decomposing human body. Gagging and in shock, I inadvertently made enough noise for my brother to pinpoint my location. His light soon illuminated the grim scene. I urgently signaled for him to run, realizing we were not alone in this desolate place. He hesitated, disbelieving, until he saw the gruesome truth with his own eyes. Panic set in, and we fled, fearing the unseen presence lurking in the shadows. My older brother, the protector, guided me back home, our pace quickening with every step. We dared not look back until we heard a footstep in the snow behind us. Glancing over our shoulders, we saw a figure standing about fifty feet away, illuminated by my brother's flashlight. We raced back home, recounting the harrowing encounter to our parents, who promptly contacted the authorities. The police arrived launching an investigation and searching for the body. Though we offered our best recollections of the location, the body remained elusive, leaving us haunted by the possibility that the person responsible was still out there, stalking us. Even now, years later, I wonder if we narrowly escaped a fate far grimmer than we could have imagined during our innocent childhood game.